Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And with this video, I'm going to give you a lot of research and data on calcification of arteries and how it comes out and how it gets in the first place. So I, start, I want to start off by saying that ketosis is still the foundation of having a strong immune system and clean arteries. Now, I had created a protocol of six supplements a while ago, and I had good results with it, re lowering the coronary artery calcium score. But I was missing something. I was missing nanobacteria. These are tiny bacteria that live anywhere in your body. And if they're in their arteries, they will live in a biofilm. They create a film that they live in. Now, this is not a new concept. Fungus does this. Parasites do this. Even worm, like tapeworms, they will form a film on the inside of the colon, and they'll swim in that film. So nanobacteria do it. And then... The body will see this as an invasion, and now you got the immune system coming in, and the film will turn calcified, and then the, the nanobacteria make more film. So it gets bigger and bigger. The immune system puts in fibrin and treats it like a scar. And it can, it'll become calcified, it'll be swollen, it'll build up and up, and this is how you get a mound of placking on the inside of your arteries. So nanobacteria is a new concept, 1988, that's when that was discovered. So if you know me, I go back 100 plus years and I research what they knew back then. And so we, we can't forget the nanobacteria. And there are um, ways to fix this. You can also have vitamin deficiency causing heart disease. For example, B vitamin deficiency is known as beriberi. And that's a form of heart disease. So you have to take all 50 to 100 B vitamins that were known in 1940 but not studied thoroughly you can't just go to the health food store and get vitamin B1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 12. The other vitamin deficiency that causes heart disease is vitamin C. And 200 years ago, that disease was called scurvy. Now it's called a stroke. And that's when the capillaries and arteries become very permeable and you get internal bleeding. So ascorbic acid does not fix that. You have to get the whole vitamin C, which is a big functional mechanical complex with rutin and other factors. You got minerals in there. You got bioflavonoids in there. It's a big molecule and it's active. Ascorbic acid is a small dinky molecule and it's inactive. It's just a chemical. So below I have links. One is a one particular researcher's description of what happens. And then I have two links from the National Institute of Health and one from the Mayo Clinic, all describing this phenomenon of nanobacteria. And I have two links below regarding treatment of this. And the first study was 91 patients over three months. They dropped their coronary artery calcium score, which is the best test for calcification of the arteries, by 58% in three months, which is really good. 19 people had a score of zero at the end of three months for their coronary artery calcium score. That's the best score is zero. I've seen as high as 4,000. Anything over 400 is dangerous. In the second study, they started with 100 people. They ended with 77, meaning the other people had dropped out. And after four months, the average drop was 14%. And 57% had responded. Um, and there, but there were no adverse side effects. And their lipid scores improved, meaning the cholesterol dropped, etc. 19 of these people had angina. At the end of the second study, um, 16 of them had no angina, meaning no heart pain. Another reference I'm going to give you is the Calcium Bomb book. It was written in 2004 on Amazon. It has really good reviews. I have not read the book, but I just want to make sure that you have access to this if you want to uh, study more on this, on this subject. I do want to mention that the father of holistic nutrition, Dr. Roy Lee, mentioned the phenomenon of having too much calcium in the body. And he equated it with having not enough potassium in our diet. And so he talked about older people being stiff, their joints being stiff because they were deficient in potassium and their body had too much calcium in it. I'm going to give you two success stories of people who treated their uh, excess calcium using the correct um, therapies. And one person had excess calcium in his, kidney stone, in his kidneys in that he had two kidney stones. One was six millimeters, the other one was eight. In his other kidney, 
He had a cyst that was 4.6 centimeters. And doing the correct therapy to get the calcium out, both problems went away. Both stones and the cyst both went away. Another person had a coronary artery calcium score of 105, and it dropped 17% in four months down to 87. And his lipids improved, meaning his cholesterol dropped from 241 to 165, and his LDL dropped from 171 to 108, and his triglycerides dropped from 122 to 75. So those are a couple case studies. So all these links are below. And um, with this video, I'm not mentioning any products whatsoever because I want to be FDA legal. But you can do your own research, and I want to give you this compilation below in the description box. So go ahead and click and start reading. If you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe.